What's up, everybody? I'm back for another sound design vlog. Uh, you know, we'll go through the same process, hopefully touch on a few other things that maybe I didn't try last time that we can try this time uh, to get some good results. Um, getting right into it, I've got this animation that I like, that I'd like to add some audio to. Let's check it out real quick. I like the way it, it zooms out of the picture. We've got a sunrise. Um, I've got a couple ideas we can try for that. Something I've been wanting to try that I haven't is make a drone. So we're going to see if we can put together one of those with Ableton's operator. All right. So we're going to come in here. Pull up operator. We're going to come down here into the first oscillator. Nothing real crazy. I'm just going to grab a triangle wave. Not that low, though. Suggest the envelope to have a much slower attack and a really, really long release. Okay, 20 seconds might be a little bit much. Release will do about 10. Grab another one. Turn up another. Turn up another oscillator right here. Do about the same. Let's pick a different wave though. Let's do a. Let's pick a square maybe. Whoa! <laughs> kind of bananas. Oh, let's turn up the spread. The spread and make it a little bit wider. I want to filter this. Okay, so I've got two oscillators. I've got them both turned up. I've got a triangle wave on one of them. I've got a square wave on the other one. I went ahead and turned up the spread. Turn up the spread over here and I've got a filter going on it. Let's see what else. Let's definitely throw a giant reverb on here. Shit, I don't know. 10 seconds? 10 seconds? Why not? That sounds crazy. Let's do it. Because we're crazy. Ooh. You know what? And the first thing I should have done that I did not do was make a loop with this. So let's see. All right, so here's the clip. Here's our four bar loop. All right, 120 right now. We want to bring it back down inside of there a little bit. 107.2. Oh, 107.1, 107.15, 107.15. Ah, geez, you know what? That's close enough. This is horseshoes and hand grenades. We'll be just fine. Got this beautiful mountain scene that we're fading out of right here. Let me turn that metronome off right now. Um, all right, three, two, three, four, four, two, three. So it looks like it's the logo reveal. It's going to land on the, th on the three, which is cool. Um, so let's just go back through and see what kind of chords we can lay down. Um, you know, like I did last time, find somewhere to start, find somewhere to end, and just see what we can put together with that, with uh, with the drone. All right. All righty. A lot of times when you let the MIDI loop around, and come back here, it'll get rid of your first note. It'll start recording over it. So I'll just uh, command Z to put that back in there if you caught that. Um, all right. All 
All right. After messing around for way too long, I think I finally found something that'll fit on top. But you know what? That's the realest thing is like, don't ever rush this. Find something that you think is dope. Forget everybody else, you know? I'm not even going to tell you guys how long it took me to come up with that. I just cut it all out. I just cut it all out, you know? Okay, well, I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm just going to record it. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and record the top chords over this bass part that I just laid. If you look up here at the top, this plus button is the MIDI arrangement overdub button. When enabled, existing notes and MIDI clips and the arrangement will be mixed with rather than replaced by newly recorded notes, a.k.a. when you go back to record some stuff over the top, it won't get rid of your shit. So that's what we want to do. I don't want to get rid of the bass notes I just recorded. I want to record something on top of it. So that is exactly where you need to click. Enable that, and then I'm going to hit record, and we're golden. Since the, since the attack is so slow, it takes these notes a minute to kick in. Well, I mean, really, I don't know what we have it set at exactly. Let's look. About 11 seconds to get to full volume. So that's why you see me kind of putting these back behind the one. I did it last time. I'm going to do it again, y'all. We're going to freeze and reverse this to see if we can pull out anything kind of neat. Uh, I want to keep this operator unaffected, so I'm going to duplicate it to create one that I can mess with. I'm going to reverse the MIDI notes. Make sure we got all of them, because sometimes it only reverses a few of them, and then everything's... Nothing sounds, right? So next, I'm going to freeze the track, and I'm going to flatten it. Oh, now I've got this thing here. Let's see what parts of that we can use and what parts we can use. Okay, I think that sounds super dope. Let's see. Let's chop the end. We're going to try something different that I haven't done in these videos yet, but that I like to use a lot. I don't know if you all have tried it before, but use the auto pan. I'm going to throw auto pan on here. The first, the first value right here is the amount. That's going to determine how far right or left it's panning. The rate can be determined by a frequency or can be determined by a note value that's synced to the clock. Um, the phase, this is the part you're going to want to adjust to turn it into more of a gate. You want to print this down all the way to zero degrees. And when you do that, you can see, see these, this right and left channel come together. So to demonstrate that, so like we're on eighth notes, 100% pan all the way out. You can hear it bouncing back and forth. When I bring it all the way to zero percent phase, you can hear it just pulsing. So now it's more of a gate. And you can choose the different types of slopes you want. You'll find that some of these may sound better than others. And you know what? Let's do something else I love to do. Let's pitch this down. Because why not? Let's take a look at the video. I'm not hearing this second one we just made so well. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to EQ something out of this first one. Uh, maybe I'll cut some low end and let the other one carry it. I kind of like the pulsing that it has. 
So let's see. Let's throw EQ8 on here. Uh, put a high pass. Roll it. Roll that thing up. Just roll it up. Don't smoke it, but just roll it up to about 250. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And let's see what, what this has got. Let's add some more low end to it, maybe. You know what? I might use the glue compressor again. You already know I love that thing. Let's just put it on there. Hey! Roll it down. I'm only going to want about 5 dB of gain reduction. Turn a soft clip on because I don't want it to sound all crazy and distorted. Should give it a little bit. Alright, I am going to cut some super low frequencies, maybe below 56. Don't be afraid to get crazy with the EQ too. Some people think there's some kind of rules or something, but just tweak the knobs off of this EQ. Because you're not going to hurt anything. If your ears start bleeding, then turn it back down. But if lo as long as your ears aren't bleeding, then you're probably good. You know what I might do? I think I'm going to automate this. Because I like that sweep so much. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Starting high... Yeah, I think I think just that super simple sweep just sounds crazy to me right now. So it definitely sounds like something's waking up, you know. I like it. I don't think there's anything that highlights the logo reveal at this point though. I think it sounds cool. Yeah, Timescapes Production. Those cats, man. I don't know where. Every time I sing, those cats, those cats start start meowing. I think they might be in the vocal booth. I don't know. I'm gonna check it out later, though. I'm gonna check it out later. I'm gonna find those cats. I'm gonna skin them. No, that's not true. I have two cats. I love them very much. So let's find something. Let's find another another element. Something with a lot more highs in it that can cut through when the logo emerges. Right here, right around the fourth bar, right around. The three. Let's pull up Nexus. Because why not? Hey! There it is. I like, I like the plucks. I like plucks. I don't know, man. I like plucks. I'm a sucker for plucks. Because I'm a sucker for plucks. I like plucks, man. They just sound... I've got really bad ADD as it is. You put toys like this in front of me, it's hard for me to get anything done. You guys are really helping me do this because I know I don't want to sit here and edit like two hours worth of video later. Get to work. Yum. Okay. So I'm over here jamming out on this digital xylophone. If y'all didn't hear me. It sounds pretty cool. Might just get rid of the delay. Already sounds dreamy enough to me. Uh, let's filter it just because we can. Let's put a notch filter on there because that's crazy. And I'm crazy. Woo! Sometimes, sometimes, and let's try this. Sometimes, because the Ableton push is cheating so hard, every button that I push on here is within the scale. So I can literally just 
run my hands up it and run my hands down it, and it just makes sense. Um, it's a little abstract, but sometimes you can pull something out of there that sounds good. So let's just let's just rub our fingers. Let's just run our hands down the push and see if we can make something that sounds cool. Okay, that's a little abstract. Let's see, you know what I'm going to do? So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to separate each of these runs so that once they are done playing out, the reverb tails from... The reverb tail from the first one isn't going to run to the second one, and the reverb tail from the second one isn't going to run to the third one. Otherwise, we would just have a giant f***ing mess of reverb. Um... Let me duplicate it, because I might want to hang on to that one. Let me freeze it. It's a free. Let me freeze it. Let me flatten it. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to tie these back together. So I want those together. I want these together. And I want this together. Now, let's reverse them. Uh, let's see. Whoa. Whoa, did you guys hear that? Did you guys frickin' hear that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Told ya. What? Uh, let's make a little fade right here. Also, once again, hold option. Click and drag. Get yourself a nice little curve there. Everybody's doing it. Guys. Guys. This is cool. This is good. <laughs> this is good. We're doing really good here, guys. This has been a very creative experience so far. You know what I would like to add that I'm not sure I have in my library? It's just some kind of natural sound. Some kind of like bird or water or just something natural given the identity of this brand. Just when knowing your library comes in handy, like you really need to know your library up and down. I, I don't think I've ever searched for animal sounds before, but I thought I might have something in there. Maybe cat? I don't know. Catchy? No. No. Maybe ethnic. Maybe ethnic would give me something. I have no idea what that is. That's really, really, really creepy. Uh, that's, in fact, the things that nightmares are made of. But let's see. I like it. It kind of pulses like everything else. Let's see if it makes sense. I don't believe it's in the same key. I don't know what I can bring out of that. Let's see. Let's see what's in the uh, high frequencies in there. If I could just filter them out. Maybe something. Something that we could use. Crickets. I like the crickets. I like the crickets a lot. I think that's exactly what I was looking for. Look at that, man. All you got to do is dig, dude. All you got to do is dig. Just type. You don't even have to dig through records. I mean, you could. You probably should. That'd be a lot cooler. But that's not what we have. I just found crickets chirping in my library. I didn't know they were in there, but, you know... You might have crickets in your glyph, too. I don't know. You know what we could do? You know what we're going to do? I'm going to create an effect rack, an audio effect rack. So I've got my auto filter. I'm going to hook my auto filter up to a reverb. And I'm going to map the dry-wet value to macro 1. I'm also going to map the frequency on the filter to macro 1. So, in theory, what I'm going to do here is I'm going, every time that I turn this knob up, I want it to filter off more high frequencies and 
fall back into the reverb. So the reverb, as the as the high pass filter comes up and everything starts disappearing, it's going to get wetter, soaking wet on the reverb. I mean like 100%. But I, what you can do, let's see. If I click this map button right here on the audio effect track, it's going to bring up your parameters right here. And you can set certain constraints to say that the lowest, so we've got the reverb right here, it's mapped to macro one. The parameter on the reverb that we're affecting is the dry wet value. You can set a like a minimum and a maximum. I, I want to say when the macro is all the way down, the least amount of reverb that I would like to have is probably 61%, 62%. That's fine. And when the macro is all the way down, the lowest I want this filter to go is about 1.74 kilohertz. That's fine. Um, something else that I might map just for fun is this decay time. Because I can. Um, I want the minimum to be about three seconds. And I'll have the maximum be like 15 because it's just gonna, I'm just gonna bring it up and have it disappear here at the end. So let's see what that sounds like. So we're just listening to this sample right now. So after I'm done, I can hit this map button and it's going to disappear. And you can see all of the parameters adjusting as I move this one knob, which is super dope. This is one of the coolest features about Ableton Live that if you didn't know about it, that's tough. But now you do and you will absolutely love it. So let's see. You know what I don't want? Is I don't want that filter to go all the way up. Don't want that filter to go all the way up, and then after it goes all the way up, filters off all the low frequencies, I think I want to have a sweep in there somewhere. Maybe during the very end right there right there where you see the globe kind of gloss over right there okay that's cool to me that to me this is movement that's something that i need to turn into sound so what i'm gonna do is collapse that rack we're done with that i'm gonna add another filter this may seem counterintuitive because on this filter i'm sweeping up and on this filter i'm gonna sweep down but i'm gonna turn the resonance up You'll be able to hear what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to nothing inside of the audio effect track. I'm going to go to the second auto filter, which is going to be this one right here. Um, and as you move the knob on the auto filter, you're going to see the automation lane open up. I'm going to put my grid down to narrowest so I can get super precise. Come in here with a scalpel. You know, it's not open heart surgery, but I guess we should be happy about that. I would probably kill somebody on accident, of course. Okay, sweep, 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 sweep. Sweep finishes about right here. Let's see how much of that it catches. That was fucking sexy. That was sexy. Maybe it doesn't have to come down that far, though. Okay, okay, so let's come back out and listen to everything together. And put my loop back around here to my four bars. And I can crop this down because we don't need that. Uh, okay, let's start it off. I like it. I think the pulsing needs to end right about there. It goes on too far. Chart volume, let me just curve this down. 
I like it. I'm just looking. I like to go back through. I like to go back through after I reach a, well, a saving point. That's a good thing to bring up, too. I cannot stress that enough, guys. You should really, really, really save. I can't stress that enough. Make sure you save. Save your set. Good lord. I had done all of that and I for I had forgotten to save it until just now. So when I get to a place where I can, when I save, when I'm done finishing, polishing up an element of, of this sound design, save it, like I said, sit back, watch it again, watch for elements in the video that you can emulate, or make sure that you're hitting things. You know what's cool? You know what we might try to catch? This is the very beginning, at the very beginning. And the outline of the mountain starts to spread to the left. I like that. Um, it's going to have to be something... Something of a somewhat higher frequency. Maybe we could do a... A reverse symbol. A reverse symbol. Let's try that. Let's see if we can somehow... Make this symbol... Emulate... Emulate the, the ridge line growing across the screen to the left. Okay, so first things first. I really need to compress the crap out of this thing because it's got a bigger dynamic range than I want. I just want it to just be a lot more consistent than that. In fact, in fact, I think I might just trim this part down. Trim that part down. I've got everything highlighted. That's why it's all coming down. Let's do that. Let's add a reverb. Let's add a reverb. Let's add a reverb. Let's freeze it. Let's flatten it. Okay, so now we got this crazy, stupid, long hit. Um... So that's funny. I put a reverse symbol onto the track and then I reversed it. And then I reversed it because I can't. Uh, I like the bigger attack up front. Let's try something crazy. Let's put a vocoder on it. I don't know. Why? <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Uh, so let's just mess with the symbol for right now. I'll put the video up. Why not? I think that's fun sometimes to kind of use the use the vocoder as a comb filter of sorts. Just kind of bring down every other frequency. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do with that element is pan it to the left because I want it to follow the movement of the ridge line. All right, well, you know, that's super, super, super subtle. I don't even know if that really made a difference. Maybe somebody will pick on that, pick up on that. Maybe somebody won't. It's just another example of following visual cues inside of the graphic animation to create audio elements. Let's watch it a couple more times and see what else we can pick up on. All right. All right, there might be one more thing that we can do. And I'm just going to follow the same MIDI that we have right here for the operator because it's going to be the exact same progression. I just want to find a different pad to mix in on top of that. And I'm going to have the filter come up. We're gonna have the filter come up to follow the sunlight. That's it. So that's all I'm gonna do. Let's see what Nexus has. Let's just do this. Do this and get it over with. Uh, gated pads? No. I just want regular pads. Single layer pads. Let's see what that has.
think I want to EQ out a lot of the low end. Let the pulsing, let the pulsing synth from the operator carry that. But okay, so that's all. That's all this this EQ eight is going to serve for. I might. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna do auto filter frequency. I'm going to start it pretty low. We'll start around 1K. So we're just really gonna be picking up 200 to 1K. Okay, let's see. I wanna start it. You know what, let's just start it all the way down. Okay, sun comes out. Bam. Automation marker. Starts to get brighter, 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 brighter. Or does it just keep radiating? It just keeps radiating. So I think it's gonna So we're looking at the foreground, not the background. Foreground. Brightest. About right here. Up, uh, you know what? You know what messed us up though is that these first notes didn't carry over. They didn't last long enough. They need to last all the way out, so that we have something to filter. Because what happened is they cut off, and then there was nothing for the filter to come up on. There's nothing going on for it to reveal. <laughs> I like it. I think it's a little bit too dramatic. And I think I'll have it filter back off at the end. Oh, I think that's great. Okay, I think that's wonderful. I just want to put a few fades on here and we should be good. fade this out just a little bit so that I can let the the reverse part from next to shine through a little bit. I want I want that to shine through a little bit more. So I am going to duck this pad out. Duck our first operator out a little bit more. All right. I think that sounds great, looks great. I think we hit I think we hit a lot of major cue points within the motion of the animation. I think we've encompassed most all of the frequencies, which is important. You wanna have you know, highs, lows, mids, all that, play with it, keep it interesting, keep people's ears drawn to it. I don't know. I think it just sounds cool. I think that's enough. Thanks for sticking it out with me, guys. Uh, big shout out to spinmylogo.com. Y'all should go check them out. They do great work, obviously. All right, let's check it out one more time. I'm satisfied with it. I hope you guys like it. I hope you enjoyed your time with me, and I hope you learned something most of all. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe, like, holla at me, hit me on Instagram, hit me on Twitter, email me, whatever, man. If y'all have some questions, hopefully later on I'm going to get into some more hip-hop tutorials, R&B, pop, that kind of thing. But for right now, I'm just focusing on sound design for the first few episodes. But uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Peace.